Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so uh, as Sarah mentioned, my name is Amelia. I'm an artist here in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I am I paint with watercolors um, and several other types of media. Um, I'm also a teacher at Towson University and a local community college. Um, so I really love teaching art and talking about art. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our watercolor demo slash lesson today. So Sarah, we can switch over. Um, so if you did not get a chance to see um, on uh, the mix group or on Instagram, I posted a little preview of what we're going to be working on today. Um, so I have this cute little lemon. Um, and I thought this was going to be a really nice thing to paint one because it's a, a relatively simple shape. Um, it uses the colors that came in the winter uh, watercolor snacks box. Um, and also, I think um, it's really interesting because it uses the um, like I said, the three colors, um, but you can also use the pen to create some texture on here as well. Um, so this is uh, what our final painting is gonna look like. Now, if yours doesn't look exactly like this, or if you would prefer to work on a completely different project, you just wanna kind of follow along, that's also okay. So you're welcome to do whatever you like. Um, if you Also, if you um, haven't had a chance to look on the mix group yet, um, I did also post um, just our reference picture. This is a royalty-free image that I got from a website called Pexels, which is a really great place if you're ever looking for um, reference images. So this is where I got this from. Um, so if you need a visual reference um, to see the colors that I'm working with in the photo, you can also go over there. Um, I also posted, I just did a really simple line drawing um, that if you want to work off of my line work, you can. Um, but I always encourage if you want to try, you know, challenging yourself to do your own drawing too, um, that's also fine. Um, but our main focus is going to be the watercolor techniques and less on the drawing. So that's why I wanted to kind of give you um, something to kind of uh, have as a jumping off point in case uh, you're not as strong of a draftsman or at drawing. So, um, so this is what we're going to go with. Um, and I'm going to do, I always like to do just a brief overview of the materials and setup that I have, just so you can kind of see what I'm working with. And if there's anything that you want to um, just jump up real quick and grab um, so that you have the same materials that I have, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, so the paper that I'm using is the paper that came in our winter watercolor snacks box. It's this Bockingford um, St. Cuthbert's Mill traditional watercolor paper. This is um, what is called a hot press paper, which means that it has a very smooth surface. Um, so if you have this paper, um, you'll notice that it doesn't have that traditional kind of bumpy look to the watercolor paper. And that's because of the process of pressing the paper. Um, they use a hot roller instead of a cold one. So a lot of those, uh, that textured um, surface gets uh, pressed out of the paper. So it's a little different um, than what you may have worked with before, um, but it's really nice for if you wanna work with any other materials on top for drawing, uh, that type of paper is really nice. Um, also mention really quick before I get into everything else, if you don't have the winter watercolor snacks box, whatever watercolor supplies or art supplies you do have is fine. Um, I'm just sharing what I'm working with uh, today. Um, so I usually have about two uh, containers of water. Um, I keep two for a reason. Um, the reason being that for one of them, uh, I use when I'm washing off my brush between colors. I have one for dirty water uh, that I use to get the, the paint off. And then one that I keep clean so that I can um, mix water into my watercolor paint without it getting other colors um, into the paints that I'm mixing because if you use the water that you're using to wash your brushes it will get dirty with your paints um, or your paints might change colors especially if we're working with yellows and blues you'll end up with green unintentionally um, so that's what I have here and then I have um, the watercolor palette the plastic palette that came um, you can see I've been making lots of use of mine um, I use I always keep a paper towel on hand um, I have the two brushes that came in the kit or in the box 
Um, these are, this is a King Art uh, brush and a Princeton brush. I have a big one and a little one, um, two different sizes. And then uh, this Faber Castell Eco Pigment Pen. This is a waterproof pen. Um, so that means that uh, you can use this with watercolors. You just have to let it dry all the way before you add a watercolor layer on top. And then of course, um, my watercolor tubes, the Daniel Smith. We have Prussian Blue, Hansa Yellow Deep, and the Phthalo Turquoise. Um, those are our three colors. And then um, we also have the Krita Color um, Graphite Watercolor Pencils. Um, I'm probably going to really just be using the green one, what is blue? The green one primarily. Um, if you're not sure which color is which, it does say um, the color on the, pen the pencil, just in case you need that. Um, I'm going to use those probably at the end for the detail. Um, so that's everything that I have with me. Um, you'll notice I also have my paper taped to, um, I have a clipboard here, um, which I did to try to help keep my paper flat as I add water to it. Um, so if you want to um, tape your paper down, that's fine. Or if you're leaving it on your watercolor block, um, this is not glued down on all the sides, so it might get a little bit wobbly. Um, you can always tape down the sides in your watercolor block as well. Um, so I've already transferred my drawing onto my paper. Um, if you're on that step now, there's two different ways that you can do that. Um, you can either take a graphite pencil and uh, just color across the whole back of the paper um, and then trace over the line work onto your paper. It's going to work like a transfer. It's going to transfer your... Um, your uh, pencil work onto your paper. Um, the other method that you can use is if you still have some sunlight um, coming through your window, um, you can uh, use the, the window as a transfer. You put your line work behind your watercolor paper and the line work will show through where you can trace it. Or if you have a bright computer screen or a light table, you can use that as well and trace on top. Um, so, uh, with that being said, um, you can go ahead and start the painting part of this, but this is the whole setup. This is how I got everything started. No worries if you're still catching up on some of this. Um, you can work at your own pace, and if you have questions or need me to go over anything again, please feel free to. You can either um, unmute yourself or you can uh, just jump in the chat and let me know to go over something again, and I'll be happy to do it. Um, so I'm going to start by um, using what's called a wet and wet technique. And actually, I got a little bit ahead of myself. I, I wanted to point out something that I thought was really interesting about the colors that we have. Um, so you'll notice we have three colors. Um, we have blue, yellow, and green. Um, and I just wanted to point out uh, something that's pretty cool because it seems a little tricky. We don't have any red, so we don't have as wide a range of colors that we can mix, um, but I wanted to show you that we have what's called an analogous color palette, and that means that we have um, three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, um, and this is a way of working with color, a limited amount of color, um, so that we can get uh, a, a very a, a small amount of colors, but you can still work with them and they will look nice together. So we have the blue, green and yellow. And then of course we have the colors in between. Um, those are considered tertiary colors. We have uh, two primary colors and a secondary color. So we kind of have this little half of the um, color wheel that we're working with. Um, and I just thought that was uh, an interesting thing to point out. Maybe if you're not as familiar with um, the color wheel or working with limited colors, um, that even though you don't have the red or purple or orange to work with, that you can still come up with some pretty interesting color palettes. Um, and if you're looking for inspiration, you can always, um, if you like to search online, you can look up analogous color palette, blue, green, and yellow, and you can get some more ideas for things um, that have those limited colors. So that's where I came up with the idea for using a lemon because I was thinking about, you know, we have yellow and green um, and you can add in some blue to make the shadows. Um, you can uh, mix yellow and blue to make the green. Um, so you have some interesting colors that are working together. We don't have uh, as much detail, but those colors work together nicely for an image like this. 
So I just wanted to share that because I thought that was pretty neat. Um, and maybe if you haven't worked with colors very much before, that might be something cool and exciting for you to learn about. Um, so back to what I was saying before, I'm using what's called a wet and wet technique to begin with. So wet and wet is when you start by wetting your paper with just plain, clean water, no color. Um, and I'm going to start with my lemon. So I'm just dipping my brush in my clean water jar. And then you can just apply the color to your paper. And I'm just painting the, the yellow part of the lemon to begin with. This. Now I, I added a little spot where I want to remember that my highlight is. It's okay if you go over it with the water um, to get your paper wet. And I'm actually going to turn on another light here just so that I can see even a little brighter. I can see my where my water is on my paper. Now you don't want to add too much water that you're getting puddles on your paper but you want to add enough water so that your paper doesn't dry out too quickly. So I would say you might have to go over a few times, but enough that you kind of have a shine on your paper, but it's not so wet that you're getting puddles happening on your paper. And if you can't quite see, you can either tilt your paper a little bit or, um, I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of tilting my head a little bit. So just so that I can see how the light is hitting the paper. And the nice thing about this um, dagger brush that I'm using is that you can, as you rotate your brush around, you can get either a nice flat broad side that covers a larger surface area or you can turn it so that you get that little detail point of your brush and you can get into those smaller areas. So I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm just gonna put a little bit of my of my yellow paint. I'm just I so I'll show you really quick how I like to squeeze out my paint. You can see I have a little bit coming out already. I'll usually just kind of swipe that across my palette and it doesn't seem like a lot but with the tube of watercolor paint a little bit goes a long way because you're adding water to your paint um, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my clean water um, and I usually will kind of swipe my brush across the lip of the well of the palette and I'll do that a couple times just to get a nice bead of water and then when I have enough, that's when I kind of start to mix up my uh, paint mixture. And I usually go for, I don't want it to be too watery, but I also you know, want it thinned out enough that when I apply it on the paper, um, it's not going to uh, be really heavy. Um, so I usually kind of try to get something in between. And it looks like my paper actually dried out a little bit um in just in that short amount of time because you know watercolor paper is really absorbent so after I put this um put this down I'm going to add some more just plain water to my paper so when I'm rinsing my brush out between colors what I will usually do is give it a couple swirls in my dirty water and then just wipe it off on a paper towel to make sure it comes off clean. And then I can go into my clean water, uh, my clean water jug for that. So when you're, when you're working with watercolor, a big thing I think that is probably the trickiest thing to learn with watercolor is just the timing of you know, how to work with the paint before things dry out, but also when to let things dry a little bit. And I think that's that's probably the trickiest part. Um, but just like with anything, the more you practice, the more you start to observe and notice things and it becomes easier.
So now that my paper is more wet, you'll start to notice how the, paper, the paint kind of spreads over the, the wet part of the paper a little more easily and even kind of creates uh, like a little bit of a, a blooming effect as it hits the wet part of the paper. Now I like to use this wet and wet technique whenever I'm doing a broad wash across a big area because I feel like it helps the when the paper is wet, it helps that color disperse across the paper more evenly. Um, and you may have even noticed just in between the first uh, stroke of paint I put down between when I added the water, how much more evenly it flowed across the paper. Um, so there are times when the wet and wet technique works really nicely. I have a little cat hair on my paper from my little studio assistant. Okay, that's better. Um, <laughs> so you'll notice that sometimes it uh, it works better when you have that flat wash. Other times you're working more detailed um, and you don't want the paint to spread across the paper as much. Um, and in those instances, you will use what's called wet on dry, just meaning that you're using a wet paintbrush, wet paint on dry paper. Um, so that's really the difference between the two. Um, and uh, it just depends on the kind of application that you're looking for, whether you want something that's a little softer or covering a bigger area versus something that is maybe more detailed um, or in a smaller area. Um, just depends on on what you're what you're going for. Um, so I'm adding another wash, and you can wait for yours to dry a little more if you want. But I'm adding a little bit more color over here on this side because I want it to look a little darker and also more intense in color because this area has less light hitting the surface. Of the shape. You'll also notice that I'm kind of creating a rounded shape, um, that this is sort of the brightest part of this lemon here. And so I'm creating this rounded shape to help give a sense of form. And so I'm, I'm using my brush strokes to help define that rounded shape there. And you can kind of play a little bit with moving the the paint around. Now my my pencil lines are a little dark. Um, so you know a, a trick to that if you have dark pencil lines um, is that I often actually will go over my pencil lines with um, it's called a kneaded eraser. You may have seen them before. They're the really sort of uh, soft, they almost feel like clay or silly putty. Um, I like to use these to lighten up my pencil lines, um, but I didn't do it this time and I think that's okay. So if you didn't do that on yours either, it's not a problem. Um, but if you, uh, in the future, if you don't want your, your pencil lines to show through as much, that's a good um, trick to, to try. Um, so I wanna let it this dry just a teen, teeny tiny bit. Um, so. I'll show you on my dried version um, as this dries what I'm going to do next and just kind of show you the outcome of, of the dried uh, paints from when I did this the first time. And you can see I I erased my my lines a little bit on this one. Um, so they're not, it's not as dark. Um, but you can see how when it dries, I've got this darker area that I also went over with a little bit of green um, and a little bit of the pencil as well. But just even using the yellow paint alone, you can see how um, it looks like it's it's rounded because again, the shape of the shadow is creating that sort of sense of form that it has a three-dimensional form. And also creating the highlight makes it look like this is coming forward. This is where the light is shining. Um, so it looks like it has that sort of rounded surface to it. Um, and that's just from using um, a little bit more paint um, in on one side. So watercolor is transparent, which means that um, you're using the white of the paper to 
affect the outcome of the color. You can see through the paint. So um, the the um, thinner your paint is, the more of the paper you're going to see through your layer of paint versus when you have more paint on your paper, you see more of the pigment from the paint. And that's how you can get light and dark as well as intense and less intense. And that what intense means is just how um, bright a color is versus how dull a color is. So you get more um, bright, intense color when you add more pigment um, and you can get um, a lighter, less intense, um, this is called a tint when you have a uh, color mixed with white, you have a tint um, by just adding less paint. And that's something that's unique to watercolor um, because with other paints, typically you mix in white to get a lighter color versus with watercolor, you're going to let the paper, the white of the paper shine through. So that's what will happen with how you apply the paint. So when you put a wash of color down, you can create a light, a lighter wash first, and then you can go in and add more paint to the areas that you want to be dark. And, um, you know, it will appear to be both uh, more bright in color, but also will make it look like there's more of a shadow there. Um, so this seems to have dried well enough that now I can start to add other colors onto the um, the painting. So I don't want to paint on the lemon again this part just yet. I want to let it dry a little more. So let's move on to the leaf. Um, so we have a couple options for green. Um, we have this phthalo turquoise, which is a cool green, meaning it has a little more blue in it. Um, so I actually have some on my palette already. Oops, wrong, wrong uh, water. So I actually have some on my palette already that dried and watercolor reactivates with water. So even though it's dried, I just add a little bit of water to my palette and reactivate it. And let me grab a little scrap of watercolor paper and I'll just show you what this green looks like. So if you haven't swatched out your green yet or if maybe you don't have these paints, um, you can see this is a, a turquoise. Um, so it's not really green. It's more of a of a of a blue, but I feel like it leans towards kind of a green color because it's it's a little too warm to be a blue, but it's uh, also a little too cool to be a green. So we have somewhere kind of in the middle there. Um, so we have that color. And then we also have the Prussian blue. And again, I have some on my palette already. So I'm just gonna reactivate mine um, over here with some clean water here. So then we've got are blue and you can see the two next to each other. You can see why I kind of feel like this leans a little more towards green um, and especially in the light when you see it in person. On the camera I think it looks a little more blue but when you see the two next to each other um, this one starts to look like it has a little yellow in it and, and looks a little more green compared to this uh, dark blue color. But um, so we've got that green Oh, I got a little bit of paint on my paper. So if this ever happens to you, don't panic. Just take a paper towel and gently blot your paper. And if you have a little bit of a speck of color, just take a clean brush with some water and very gently dab with your paintbrush. In your paper towel. It's almost like um, if you've ever gotten a, a stain on your shirt and you have to use like a Tide pen or um, something to try to get the stain out of your shirt. It's a little bit like that. You just have to very gently go back and forth um, and then you can touch it up with a little bit of a little bit of the paint and there's a little bit of a mark there, but you can see I had a really dark blue dot of paint and just very uh, simple um, way to kind of clean that up. So that's always a, a good live example of when you accidentally get a drip of paint <laughs> somewhere. You can I can show you how to clean it up and it's not a big deal. 
Um, so you have a couple options for mixing green because you have this phthalo turquoise, which is this kind of more of, I would say almost like a greenish blue. And then um, we have this beautiful uh, deep blue, this Prussian blue here. So as you know, you mix a primary with a second, with uh, two primaries, you get a secondary. So we have our yellow and blue. So what you can do is take some of your yellow paint and you can scoop it right out of your mixture, or you can also just squeeze um, some paint into your palette as well. Um, I am actually going to wipe out my palette. I should be better about wiping out my palette between um, paintings, but um, I'm only using the same three colors every time. So I haven't really been wiping out my palette as much. I just mix the same exact colors into the same exact spots. Um, so I try to save my paints a little. So you can just take some of your mixture and lay a little bit or wipe it off this the side of your palette. And then again, rinse off your brush. I give it a couple swirls in my cup and then I'll wipe off on the sides and then just wipe it on a paper towel to make sure it's clean and pick up my other color and give it a mix. Now you can see I've got a much more yellow green. Actually, I can mix that a little better. So you can see I've got a much more yellowy green now. So now I have a little bit more of a spectrum of colors. So, you know, this is this has much more yellow in it um, to create that uh, shade of green. But the, you can also, if you take um, some of your turquoise blue and some yellow, I think I actually need a little bit more of my colors here. Hey, Amelia, it's Sarah. Just yeah. jumping in here. Um, sure. Let you know that you are a half hour into class. Great. Thank you. At an hour left. If anybody has any questions or anything, feel free to drop it in the comments. I am here to assist. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So in my palette here, I squeezed a little bit of the yellow and the turquoise. And I'm just going to put a little bit more blue. And in fact, let's mix up a little bit more of that green because I'm going to need it. So I'll do a I'll mix some right in the palette there. Not too much, but just enough so that I have some pigment, especially if you're mixing your, your paints um, directly from the tube into a well. You don't want to squeeze too much because you'll end up with a lot of paint mixture. And you can let it dry and like like I did, especially with a, a plastic palette like this, you can just reactivate it with water later. Um, but just be mindful, especially if you're switching between a lot of colors, not to not to overdo it um, with how much paint you put on your palette, just because you want to try to, um, you don't want to waste your paints um, if you if you end up uh, wiping off your your paint later. So, all right, so I just mixed together the turquoise and the yellow, and now you can see. I've got a different kind of green. So this is almost a little bit more like a, I'd say maybe like a, a grass green or not quite a Kelly green, but you know, you get a, a, a more yellowy shade. I'm actually remixing this. Go over it again. So you can see I've got two different greens. So I've got my yellow, I've got this turquoise, Prussian blue, and then I've got two different greens that come out of that as well. So I've got kind of a nice little spectrum of, of um, cool colors over here that I can work with. And that gives me some interesting colors to add into the leaf, into shadows. Um, so even though it looks like we only have the three colors, we get kind of a nice little spectrum of cool colors that we can work with. Um, so I'm actually going to use this green that I used for mixing the yellow and Prussian blue. Um, and I am going to, once again, do my wet and wet technique. So I want to have a nice clean paintbrush. So I can take my 
clean water from my jar and put that onto my paper. Again, you can use this dagger brush to very carefully get into those little areas, those little detailed parts where you have um, more little corners, and then the flat side to fill in that broader area. Now, I've got a lot of water on here, a little more than I feel like I need. So I am actually gonna use my brush to soak up some of that water and spread it around a little more evenly. And actually, you know, if you're feeling intimidated by applying the color um, and you wanna kind of get a handle of just applying water uh, with the brush, you could practice just putting washes of water down on your paper before you add the color just to get comfortable with the motion of how to add water, how to control the water. And then you can start uh, incorporating in the pigment as well. So that might be a good exercise for you if you're starting out or you need something to practice and you're not feeling ready to um, jump in with color yet. I think that could be a good exercise. Amelia, we've got one comment. Okay. Um, from Rodney, Daniel Smith pigments really pop on camera. Love these techniques. These seem simple, but so important to learn. Great practice and exercise. Thank you, Rodney. Yeah, thank you. And I agree the Daniel Smith colors are so beautiful and pigmented. I've got a lot of lights on in here um, so that it's bright enough because this is kind of a dark room that I'm in. Um, so uh, the the lights even kind of make them a little lighter than they are in real life. So you know they're really colorful if they're um, so vibrant on camera because I feel like also things tend to not be as bright as they are in real life on camera too. So I think that really speaks to the pigment quality of the paints. So another thing to keep in mind with watercolor is, as I mentioned, you know, it's trans transparent. So you're using the white of the paper to um, control how light or dark your uh, paints are in addition to how much water is in your paint. So, you know, it makes sense that as you dilute your paint less, the pigment is more uh, dispersed across the water. So that it's more water than pigment. Therefore, you get lighter, um, lighter paint because you're allowing more of the paper to show through, right? Um, so another technique that you use with watercolor is to build up layers of color. So you, uh, something else I'll mention that's uh, a unique trait of working with watercolor is that it gets lighter as it dries. So it's it's um, never quite as bright and as intense as it is when it's uh, on the paper and wet. Um, it's gonna have what's called a drying shift. So it's gonna look a little lighter than it did when you initially applied it. Um, so another important step with working with watercolors is to build up layers of color. Um, so you'll want to um, maybe put a couple of applications of the color on your painting to get as bright and intense a color as you want for your final uh, image to be. So um, I am going to go in and add another layer. This time I'm doing wet on dry, although my paper is still just the tiniest bit damp. Um, and I'm only going to add more yellow color to the area that I want to be in shadow. So I'm just going to go over 
this area, this darker area. And I think I might also add a little bit under the leaf here, just being careful not to, not to overlap. Just a little bit there. And give my brush a rinse. I'm actually, um, what I'm doing now is, so I'm, I have a clean brush. I'm just going to put a little bit of this clean water on and then uh, dry it off just a little bit. So now my brush is damp and I'm just going to pull a little bit of that color that I just put on the paper. I'm just going to pull it a little bit very gently. And what that what that's going to do is sort of diffuse the edge of the line that I just did because I don't want it to be such a harsh edge. And between after I have pulled it just a little bit, I'm going to wipe off my brush in between. I might need to, to dampen it just a little bit, but I usually will wipe the pigment off um, just so that I don't start to smudge the paint around too much. Um, that's that's a really helpful way to blend colors, but also soften out your edges if you don't want to do wet and wet, um, that you want parts of it to be crisp. Um, you can use that as a way to soften out your edges uh, when you apply a color. Um, so the other thing I want to do um, is because I think I don't think I'm I'm really going to add maybe maybe a really light um, watered down wash um, over top of this. It's just a, a a tiny tiny bit darker. Um, just a little bit around where the highlight's going to be. Because what I'm going to do after is add a little bit of texture in. Um, so I feel like this looks pretty good. Um, but I want to show you on here, on this uh, image, you can see the surface of the lemon is kind of um, speckled. It has a little bit of a texture to it. So I want to go in and add some of that texture with um, paints. And I did that here. I did it a little bit, but I didn't go, I didn't do too much. But I started to add, you can see some just little dots with the paint. I'll try to hold it up even closer. I just added a little bit of um, stippling in with some, some paint. So I've got a little bit of texture there. So I think I'm going to do that, but I need it to, to dry just a little bit more. And I'm going to do that with the yellow. And then uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a a really yellowy green mixture to add in a little bit of shadow. Um, so I'm gonna jump over while this is drying back over to this leaf. And in the picture, it has um, a really like a uh, kind of yellowy green color. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of this. And in fact, I wanna add a little more yellow to it. So I'm just mixing my colors and then I'm going to go back over this, but I'm kind of using the point now to start to draw in some details a little bit. So I'm kind of drawing the, the veins of the leaf. And I'm leaving some areas that might be, be a little bit of a highlight area. So this is kind of the idea of working with layers. Um, and another thing that's really important to keep in mind when you're working with watercolors, again, you're kind of working in the opposite way that you would work with other paints. So you're kind of uh, working around where you want your highlights to be. So normally when you're working with other media like um, acrylic paints, graphite, um, colored pencils, uh, different um, materials that you can either erase or mix um, with white. Uh, you're you're kind of working from dark to light. So you're starting with your darkest colors and then kind of going um, in the direction of saving all the, the light values and highlights for last. With watercolor, again, you are not really mixing in white to lighten your colors. You're working with the white of the paper. So that means you kind of have to plan ahead. 
and be thinking about where you want your highlights to go um, ahead of time because you're not going to be going in and mixing in white to make lighter colors. So that's a trick when you're working with watercolor that can be a little, a little difficult at first, but again, everything just takes practice. Um, so the more you practice, the easier it will get. But it's something really important to keep in mind. Um, so while this is still wet, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow because there's some yellow mix in there and I'm just going to mix in some yellow in my leaf here. And again, this is kind of that wet and wet mixture. So I'm going to have, and you'll notice I'm wiping off my brush in between each application because I'm picking up some of that green as I go. So I don't want that to get into my pure yellow mixture. I'm just adding in, I'm just using the pointy part of the brush and kind of using it almost like a, a pen, just kind of drawing in the, the shapes uh, with the brush. And then I'm gonna let that dry. And then I think I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use my little brush now because I wanna do this detail part. So just get that. I like to get my brushes wet before I put them in the paint, even if they don't have anything on them, um, just because I feel like it's a little easier to do. So I'm gonna take a little more yellow, a little more green, and with my clean brush, just give myself a little more water. So I want this to be diluted. I want it to be more watered down. Just need to move this out of the way. And start to paint this little stem here. Like that. And let's see, maybe I'll even. This is kind of what I started to do last time. I, I kind of blended a little bit of the, the green just out and into the parts of the lemon over here. Like that. And now I think this is probably dry enough that switch back to my big brush. And while that's drying, I'm going to take, I think I'm going to get even more water because I want a little more of this. I think I'm going to run out is take a little more of this and get a bigger watered down puddle of green. And I'm going to create a shadow over here using the green. I, I watered this down because I don't want it to be a uh, very dark green. I want it to be lighter and I want that yellow to show through. Because again, you know, as we know, watercolor is transparent. So just the same as it works with adding um, color on top of white to make it lighter. When you layer a color on top of another color, a color underneath is going to show through. So this is working well because, you know, I've got yellow in my green. Yellow makes green. Um, so it looks nice when I layer it on top. But if I were working with yellow, let's say, and I put blue on top and I didn't want it to look green, that would be something I would need to keep in mind um, as I'm working because the colors are going to mix on the paper. So sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. Um, so planning ahead and just thinking about how you layer your colors is really important with watercolor as well. Okay, so looks pretty round, right? It looks like a shadow. Um, and, you know, just using, so far I've really only used two colors, but you can see I'm starting to create a sense of depth with that limited color palette. Um, 
So you don't need a lot of colors to create um, something that has a lot of, uh, like I said, depth to it, or, um, you know, seems like a fully completed piece. Um, you can work with limited colors too. It's really nice to have lots of colors, of course, um, but it's a fun challenge to see what you can do with just a few too. Um, so I'm gonna take some more of my watered down green and this, I don't, I'm trying not to um, rest my hand on my paper. So I might, I'm just gonna hold my hand kind of like this to keep it steady. And I'm just gonna add some little dots in here. I'm just using the, the pointy part of this dagger brush and I'm bringing out some of the shadow in these little speckles and that's going to make it look like the surface of the the lemon that sort of like rough bumpy citrus surface this is a really simple texture technique that you can use you just take a little paint and if your one area is not dry yet, it's gonna it's gonna spread out a little. That's okay. You can always go over it again with another layer. So you might need to do what I'm doing if uh, if you need help steadying your hand. That's what I do. I just rest my if I don't want to put my hand on my paper, I just hold my wrist with my other hand. Um, you could also set it on top of something if you have um, like a, I don't know, a paper towel roll or something even would work. But I actually think it looks pretty cool. It's a little hard to see, but I'll hold this up when I'm done um, adding these little speckles. It's kind of cool when you do this technique on paper that's still a little wet because it'll all kind of start to blend together in a really interesting way. It creates a, an even different, more different texture. And you don't have to use this big brush for this. You can use the, the detail brush too. You get the same effect. In fact, I'll use the little one for the next part too. And if you get a little too much paint, like I did, again, I just rip off a little bit of paper towel, just give it a little, little dab, and that'll that'll pick it up just fine. So I'm gonna add a little more over here. In fact, I'm going to use some of this other green that we mixed up, this kind of cool green. Just give it a little, a little in there. Okay, that a little darker. All right, and then I'm just going to take some of this yellow and the same technique I was doing before, this time with the yellow, and I'm going to make some texture here. Hey, Amelia, we got a question in the chat. Oh, great. When is the best time to use a kneaded eraser to lighten line work? Uh, that is a good question. So um, I would say actually the best time is probably in the beginning before you start. So if you didn't, that's okay. Um, it's going to be tricky to lift the eraser after you add the paint because the watercolor actually kind of seals the graphite to the paper. Um, now for this painting, I am going to just go over it with um, pen in the end anyway. So if, you know, if you, um, 
weren't able to erase the the pencil marks in the beginning that's okay um, but for the future if you want to create something that doesn't have a strong outline um, just once you put your pencil work on before you add your paint um, use your kneaded eraser and just gently roll it over top of your um, eraser or I'm sorry over top of your um, pencil marks and it'll very gently start to lift up your pencil without erasing your whole drawing. It'll just lighten it up by a small percentage. Um, and then you can still see your line work, but it won't show up as as dark in your um, in your uh, final painting. So um, but yeah, no no worries if if you uh, meant to do it earlier or if you needed to do it earlier and you didn't, that's okay because we'll go over this with pen anyway. Um, and in fact, if you decide you don't want to go over it with pen, that's okay too. I'm kind of disguising my um, my pencil lines a little with some some dots here, so you can kind of you can kind of disguise it a little. Now you can also just try to erase out your pencil lines after. I don't think it will lift as much as it would have in the beginning, but I think it'll lift a little bit. So you'll, you'll get a little bit of that effect happening. I am gonna add just a little bit to my highlight, um, but I'm going to just kind of lift it. It's not quite so dark because I want it to be later in that spot. I have a follow-up question for you, Amelia. Oh, sure. Um, what color did you use for adding texture to the lemon and for the stem? Oh yeah, so I'm just using more of the same color that I used before. So I have this kind of light green in the shadow area. Um, it's just a uh, stippling little texture in with the same exact color. Um, and then in this, I'm just using the same yellow that I used for my wash. Um, my first initial wash that I put down to to fill it in with yellow. Um, but because, again, we're layering colors, it looks a little darker um, because I have more pigment. So that's why it, it kind of looks like a different color, but it's coming through um, looking darker. So yeah. So that's the key with watercolor. It's all about just layering. Um, and again, you know, you can mix colors and make them darker. Um, that's one way. Um, and then another way is just adding layers. So if it's, if it, and you know, like I mentioned, it's gonna dry lighter than when you initially put it on. So if it looks too light, just add some more um, paint to it. In one of the classes that I teach, um, we did uh, an exercise where we were um, looking at a technique called pointillism, very similar to stippling, but with pointillism, you're mixing colors using dots, similar to what I'm doing right now. Um, and I was like, it's it's really fun. It's almost meditative. It's it's relaxing. You're just drawing dots. And one of my students was like, this is not relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, sorry, I think it's relaxing. <laughs> so if you get tired of adding the speckles, that's okay. Um, you can take a break or you can skip this part. Um, it's not, if it's not your cup of tea, that's okay. Um, but I do think it's it's a nice way to, um, to add in some texture. And I personally like doing this. Um, I, I do find it a little meditative and... Um, very satisfying when you see all of the the texture in the end um, come together. I think it looks really nice. Um, so, but everyone is a little different. Oh, and then you asked also about the texture in the stem. So again, that's just another layer. I just kind of uh, blotted a little bit of color in there. Um, that's how I got the texture there. And then the texture in the leaf um, is just from adding a darker layer and I left some areas um, lighter. That's That was my initial layer. So I didn't put more paint on top of it. And it, as you can see, it looks lighter because there's not as much paint on that part. So that's how I got that. So I'm just gonna add a 
touch more green. Just getting a little bit fussy in some areas. You don't have to add this much. Um, add a little more. And now I'm just going in and and now I'm just kind of adding some details. Um, it's kind of going over some parts like that. So we have a pretty cool looking lemon so far. Um, but I have a little more to do. So I'm going to let this dry just a little bit and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Um, so in the background, um, I wanted to use more of this really pretty Prussian blue, but I'm actually kind of thinking about maybe using either the turquoise or maybe um, this sort of greenish turquoise color, um, because this is just so pretty and it, it's a little different than um, the the green and blue that I was using before that I think I kind of want to use this one in this version. Um, I do think this is this is pretty too. Oops. Um, this is pretty too with the the nice deep blue color. Um, but yeah, I think I think maybe I'll I'll use this one this time. But you can use any color you want. Um, and if you are working with different paint set, um, you're also welcome to use a totally different color altogether. You can use whichever colors you like. Um, so uh, but I think I am going to go for using a little bit of that. Uh, turquoise color. All right, so I'm just kind of blending out. I feel a little bit too dark. I'll blend that a little bit. Okay, so I am going to use wet and wet on this. Um, that's what I did this time, and or this on this example piece. And look how pretty this effect is. I just love this so much when this happens. Um, so this is called a bloom, a watercolor bloom. Um, and I, I just have that's something I've always admired about watercolors um, is that effect that you can get. And I think it's something that's really distinctive. So I'm going to intentionally add some watercolor blooms. If you like having just the plain white background, um, by all means, you can just leave it plain white. You can add a pattern. You can start to create like a, a background. Like if you want to create branches and all kinds of other stuff, you can be as imaginative as you like. Um, but this is what I'm going to do for mine. So again, I'm just going to add um, a nice wash of clean water. And I'm going to be careful around edges especially because it's still a, a teeny teeny bit wet so I just have to be a little careful and if you want you can can do if you kind of want to just have parts of your background have color you can leave part of it white you don't have to do the whole thing but again you want it to be wet enough that the watercolor can flow you don't want it to be too dry because then it'll start to look streaky but at the same time you don't want it to be so wet that you have big puddles forming on your paper so again it's about finding that balance letting the paper soak up some water but not letting it be too dry. I usually like it to where I can see that the paper is shiny, um, that I can tell where it's wet, but that I don't have any areas where there's a big uh, drip or drop of water sitting on the surface either. So I'm not going to do this upper corner because I just kind of want to create what looks like a shadow almost on here on one side. And it's going to be this side because this is the side I have in shadow over here. So my imaginary light source is coming from this way. So that's why my shadow is down here. All right. So now when I'm ready. I'm going to start close to the lemon here 
and just follow along the shape. And I'm using the, the detail side of my brush. Careful not to touch your paper with your wrist. The reason being that uh, you'll get paint on your hand. <laughs> that happened to me when I was doing my um, example. <laughs> so I had to be careful um, not to not to get the paint on my hand and then accidentally smearing it across my paper. So, okay, so I want this to be soft. And then this is part of why I taped my paper down so that I could pick it up. And now I can kind of let the, the paint flow down the paper. I need a little more. All right, so now I'm going to take some of this clean water and just soften out the edges here. Look how cool this effect is. I am going to kind of blend it out a little, but um, I just always, I always thought that looked really pretty. I'm going to add another layer on here. So that I get that kind of like blooming effect. Okay, let's add a little more. And if you accidentally um, get a little bit on to the lemon shape, that's okay because the surface isn't perfectly smooth. In fact, I might even cross over it a little bit to create more of like a bumpy sort of surface. Blend out a little more. See how it kind of looks like a, a shadow underneath? So that's kind of what I was going for, was that it would look like there was a, a shadow being cast. That. All right. I want to let it dry a little bit, um, just because I'm going to go over this with pen. Um, I do also think it, it would be nice, like if, if you've gotten it to this point and you kind of like that it looks a little more realistic and you don't want to add line a line to it, that's fine um, because once you start to add a black outline to it, it's going to start to look more graphic, um, like a, an illustration or a cartoon. Um, so something I'll point out um, just as this is drying um, is you'll notice that in this uh, photograph, there's not really any outlines. We see edges of things um, based on how light or dark something is or how much color something has. Um, you know, we see like hard and soft edges, um, but we don't see an outline. Um, and that's kind of, I think, a big thing for if you want something to look more realistic, not adding an outline is going to help your work look like uh, more photorealistic, more like um, something you'd see in real life. So again, if you want to stop here, I mean, you know, I think this is like, it looks like a painting, but you can, you can, you know, it, it's a little more convincing as looking realistic. But if you like to have something that looks a little more graphic, um, you can also add in um, the outline to it as well. Um, so I, I think I'm going to add an outline to mine just because I do like when things look a little more graphic or uh, illustrative. That's um, the type of work that I typically make is illustration work. Um, so I don't always make things look super 
lifelike um when I when I do my drawings um sometimes I sometimes I do it depends um but often I like to add that kind of graphic element to it so I'm gonna sit my palette to the side hey if Amelia got a yes. quick question sure um can you bring the the lemon we're looking at right now can you mm -hmm. bring it up to the camera a little bit I want to see some of the detail that you've added oh sure oh yeah yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I kind of do wish that I had lightened up this um pencil here, but it's okay. Especially once I add the pen, it won't be as noticeable. But yeah, so a lot of the detail came just from the type of marks that I made. So um, I think a lot of us learn about mark making when we learn about drawing with pens or pencils. So mark making is just you know, if you've done um, stippling or hatch marks um, or, you know, um, like cross hatching, that kind of thing, drawing with line, you can do that with any other material as well. So I do it with colored pencils and you can do it with painting. Um, so the type of brush stroke you use can create different types of texture. So I created um, a different texture in the leaf than I did with the with the surface of the lemon, just based off of how I um, applied the paint with the paintbrush using marks. So um, that's another cool tip uh, that you can do. So if your lemon is still wet, um, go ahead and let it dry um, a little bit longer um, just so that uh, you don't get any unwanted smudges in your um, drawing. Um, but I am going to go ahead and start to add some line work on mine just so I can demonstrate it for you um, so that you can see what the next step will be. But if yours is so wet, let it dry. Got another question for you. Oh, sure. Um, did you use an HB pencil or more of a H or 3H? Hmm, that is a really good question. Um, so I actually used a mechanical pencil for this drawing. Um, I used, this is a Sumo Grip pencil. Um, but actually what I usually use um, that I've been drawing with is this um, oops, sorry, I thought that was looking at the camera. Um, this is an HB um, graphite pencil. This is a Creative Color pencil, but any graphite pencil you have will do. I recommend using an HB pencil um, or uh, like if you have a, a, a mechanical pencil, that works too. Um, the reason being at H, um, H or HB, I think work well. Um, but you're also mentioning like a 3H, anything that has an H in it, H, is, H stands for hardness. So it's going to be um, a lighter pencil in general. I think anything that has an H in it will work well. Um, just knowing that like a 3H is going to be much lighter than an HB or H pencil because um, it's an even harder pencil. So less uh, graphite is going to be on the paper. Um, so I think that was a really great question. So yeah, I think for sketching, particularly if you want really light pencil lines um, that are easier to erase, or maybe you don't have to lift with a kneaded eraser first, um, then this is a this is a good option. So um, that was a great question. And in fact, before I add pen, um, let me just show you the technique I would have used if I had uh, lightened it up first. So I'll take my kneaded eraser and we'll see if maybe I can lighten it up a little bit, but I'll usually kind of just uh, tap my eraser onto the paper. It's not really lifting because I've added watercolor on top. Um, so the eraser can't get to the graphite underneath because there's a layer of watercolor sitting on top of the graphite. So it, it can't reach the graphite underneath at this point. Um, but this is how I would how I would lift it. So um, I just kind of use like a rocking motion and I'll go over it a couple times. Um, and then as I'm doing that, I kind of 
will rotate my eraser around so that as it picks up more graphite, that gets folded back into the eraser and I get a clean uh, piece of eraser to lift with. So that's the technique I like to use um, for when I'm uh, lifting eraser. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna take my pen. I saved the outlining step for last because even though, as I mentioned, this pen is waterproof, um, you have to let it dry uh, before you add a watercolor layer on top. So it works nicely with watercolor, um, but you have to have a little patience. Um, and I, I wanted to uh, jump into working with the watercolors, the paints first. Um, but I also kind of like outlining after because I kind of like when it's not perfectly filled in um, and there might be a little bit of an area where um, it's not quite perfectly lined up. I kind of like that personally. I don't always want my work to be perfectly precise so sometimes I'll just allow it to um, be a little bit more imperfect and energetic. This is another um, step that I always really enjoy when I'm doing drawing or painting that has an outline in it. This is another uh, step that I personally find to be relaxing to do, um, almost like a little meditative, because I can just work slowly and, um, and not have to worry about rushing through it. And you can add as much or as little detail as you want when you're outlining it. Um, or if you just want to do some parts, you can do that too. You don't have to outline the whole thing. Kind of up to you what you want to do. And I'm kind of trying to vary the weight of the line um, by, you might notice that I'm kind of picking up the pen a little bit and creating some like dashed lines, or I'm tilting it a little to the side so that less of the tip of the pen is touching the paper so I get a thinner line, just to create a little more interest um, so it's not all perfectly uniform. And you can add um, some little marks. I'm adding just some little dots to make it look like there's some texture, maybe some speckles on there, um, just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm going to try to work from left to right so that my hand doesn't smear across my paper going backwards because I'm right-handed. So for me, working in this direction, I'm less likely to smudge my paper, um, but I'm also going to try to hold my wrist again um, just to, to prevent my hand from touching and smearing across my paper. So um, that way I can, I can keep the control without uh, making too much of a mess. So this is what I did in, in my other one. I'm kind of allowing my line to be a little shaky because I want to give the illusion that the lemon has a rough and bumpy surface. So I'm, I'm kind of allowing that line to be a little wiggly.
So I kind of try to think ahead whenever I'm doing any piece of art. Um, I've been making art for a really long time. So a lot of this stuff I just kind of intuitively know because I learned it from, from practicing for a really long time. But I think something that's helpful as you're observing your art making and learning and um, sort of finding your way around making art, just taking note of your process and how you make things. Everybody's unique in how they make art and how they approach making art. So just kind of pay attention to yourself and how you work because you'll start to notice sort of your your process for how, like the order that you do things in and how you work across the page, how, um, I guess like your, your hand, like if you have a heavy hand or a lighter touch, you can kind of start to think and plan ahead and create a, a, a process and approach to making work that you start to know yourself, um, which is for me how I kind of thought ahead to, the direction, I kind of work from top to bottom and then left to right. It's not always exactly the same every time, but I'm kind of thinking like, oh, I know how I make this. This is something that I need to keep in mind. Um, so I think just as part of your process, um, sort of that, that note taking for yourself, I think is really helpful and just kind of getting to know yourself and, and who you are as an artist and how you work as an artist is really um really useful um so i am just going to be adding in some some dots some little speckles in here and then the last thing i'm going to do is with my green pencil just add in some scribbles um actually i'll do the scribbles first and then go in with the dots so um sarah i don't know if we want to give people a chance to kind of share some work or if they have other questions or anything we could do that absolutely okay. if anybody has um we have about 10 minutes left so if anybody has um some a lemon they'd like to share um or maybe some other watercolor that they're working on right now um feel free to turn your camera on give me a virtual hand however you'd like to communicate um, you can also just drop a comment in the chat. This is a no pressure Friday evening watercolor sesh. So um, if you don't want to share, totally fine. Uh, but we thought we'd give everyone the space to do so if they'd like. All right. I see Melissa, you just turned on your camera. Hello. Hey. As I ran home from work to play. Ooh. Can you bring it closer to your camera a little bit? There yeah. you go. Wow. That's beautiful. Oh, the leaf is gorgeous. You did such a good job with the leaf. I love I'm really that. hoping to be able to lift some of that off for more of the texture. Mm -hmm. I might have let it set too long, but. Oh, that's okay. If you take, um, I don't know if you have like a little detail brush like this, but any any brush that you have that has a tip, if you take some clean water and kind of mm -hmm. do like, if I don't know if you saw when I was lifting up some color, but if you take just a wet brush, you can kind of go in and start to just gently lift out some color. So you could, you could definitely give it a, a try. I know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it'll work a little bit. Yeah, that turned out beautiful. I love the color too. It looks really yeah. nice. I was really happy with that. I love, I love dropping in the color and letting it just blend on the paper. Yes, it's so <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's nice. sharing. What? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I just said thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Yeah, you did a really nice job also with getting the highlight. Like yours looks really round. Wow. Yeah, um, that was mostly just putting a lot of water on the paper. Mm -hmm. It turned out really well. 
I tried fitting in some of the texture and then I was like, um, I'm not liking how this is turning out. So I wiped it all off. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, you could always, um, you know, if you want to practice it on like a scrap piece of paper too, you can always see if you like it. Yeah. You can also draw it on too. That's kind of what I'm doing is just like adding a little scribbles to make it look textured. You could try yeah. that. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Probably pull out some colored pencils. Yeah, definitely. I um also really like um when I do watercolor paintings like this, once they're dry, I love going over them with colored pencils and adding detail and more colors on top. So I like to kind of give like a base of watercolor to um, give color to my paper and then just add even more with the colored pencils. That's one of my favorite techniques. So that's another funny thing you can try. I love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Does anybody else want to share what they made tonight? It is okay if you don't want to. Here's a close up. See if I can get it. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Thanks. Now I understand. Yes, it's li <laughs> I'm literally just scribbling. There's nothing fancy about it. I'm just kind of doing that. So it's it's amazing how simple. Let me try to try to focus back okay there we go um it's amazing how simple like scribbles can make something look 3d or textured it's it's kind of incredible so so definitely something to try oh that's not what i meant to pick up <laughs> i'm just gonna add some add some dots I'm gonna bring my camera down too, just so you can see the details. Yay. There we go. And you can see a little more close up. And this is definitely something you wanna let dry because the ink um, stays wet for a little while when you add a little dot like that. <laughs> Amelia, this is a great view um, because we can see like the dots live, but also it's funny to see the top of your pen cap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't even realize I was like, oh, don't do that. And then it just happened again. <laughs> I was trying to, to angle it so that you guys could see. But yeah, I found that um, sometimes just adding lots of stuff makes it look really cool <laughs> and textured so this is a good uh painting to just play around with and experiment and see what happens I think this one actually looks even cooler than the first one I did I think because I added more texture so the more you practice something, the more you learn each time you do it. So it's the fun. Well, if anyone is still working on um, paintings and you end up finishing them up this evening or sometime this weekend, I hope you'll consider sharing them in the mix group because I always really love seeing what you guys are working on. Um, whether you followed along with the tutorial or did something totally on your own, um, it's really inspiring to me to see what everyone else is working on. Um, or if there's something in particular that you want me to 
include in the next live stream or create a mixed post. Um, I'm a little behind working on some mixed posts, so I'll be sharing some uh, over the weekend. So if there's anything in particular you want me to show you, let me know and I'll be happy to uh, put something up on mix for you. Um, but here is the lemon. And before we go, I'll do a nice take peel for you. In our last I was just gonna ask you to do that. Can you do <laughs> a washi tape peel? Yes, happy to. So satisfying. Yeah, especially the edge where you can, can see where I taped off the color. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read a comment that uh, Rodney left in the chat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes beauty comes from randomness or random actions in art. And they say art reflects life. So maybe random stuff and experimenting is important. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Well, yes. I, I agree. I feel like um, sometimes it's, you know, like the unexpected we learn so much from, um, which I think is, is really cool. But yeah, I hope that everybody had fun and learned some new watercolor tips and techniques or maybe this reinforced some things that you already knew, but I'm really glad that everybody was able to come hang out on a Friday night and do some painting with me. So I appreciate it. Yay. Awesome. All right. So we are at time, uh, but I want to thank Amelia for teaching us tonight and always. Um, and thank you everyone for uh, tuning in live. The recording will be posted either on Monday or Tuesday. And again, it'll be on the Watercolor Snacks Mix group. Um, but you could also probably find it on YouTube at some point too. We're trying to get more views on these classes. So um, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Happy Easter. I think Easter is on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hang in there, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Good Friday and happy Easter. Bye-bye. <laughs>